This is a Fox News alert. Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown calling for the resignation of Attorney General Eric Holder. Senator Brown saying that Holder cannot effectively serve the president anymore and that the Attorney General has lost the confidence of the American people. So, will Attorney General Eric Holder become the first U.S. Attorney General to be held in contempt of Congress? By this time tomorrow, we will know. Tomorrow evening, the full House of Representatives votes. Congressman Pat Meehan already voted yes once in the Oversight Committee proceedings. He joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to be with you, Greta. I um, want to respond to uh, the uh, breaking news with Senator uh, Scott Brown calling for the resignation. Do you agree with him? Should uh, Eric Holder resign? I need to see the rest of the facts, which is why we're asking for what is you know, in the paper, so to speak, that are behind the activities in the highest levels of justice uh, once they were aware of Fast and Furious before I'd make that uh, calculation. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow is, do you have any idea what time the vote is tomorrow, by the way? Probably afternoon, I think. We'll be all be dealing with what's going to be a momentous day as it is already with the Supreme Court decision. Uh, is there any chance to hear of any meeting as the Department of Justice uh, making any late night deliveries, anything between now and tomorrow? Gives you any uh, thought that this might be aborted, this, this vote tomorrow? Yeah, I'm not aware of that. And I, I was hopeful at the time of the last negotiations that it would have been more. But, you know, w w we've both dealt with prosecutors where there's a lot of times in which you'll do in proffers. You'll share information in a way in which you are able to allow people to see what might be in those documents, and then you negotiate. It's been a very sort of one-sided negotiation here. I'm going to tell you what it is that you might be able to have so long as you represent to me before you get it that you won't take any steps further. And, and I get and, to pick what you see. Yeah, and, and I get the to Justice pick what Department you see. would never take that deal themselves. So it, 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 we've almost been pushed to this point. I'm quite sort of frankly surprised that the Attorney General put the President in the position of now, you know, using the executive privilege in something which is, is arguably a, you know, a, a, a difficult a direct connection to make. And so it's, you know, we find ourselves getting into a, a, even a more complex legal issue than what I think is the simple question of uh, allowing us to understand who knew what at the highest levels of the Justice Department which, with what is a pretty straightforward and admitted violation of, of their own procedures. What, I mean, I realize there's, there's a big difference between facts and suspicions. And sometimes when people don't give you information, you develop suspicions and some are reasonable suspicions. In sort of going into your own mind, reasonable suspicion, uh, what do you suspect is going on? Is, you know, what's being hidden or what's not being hidden? Well, w once again, and I'm not being uh, avoiding, I, I like to see, and this is the prosecutor background, you like to see what really comes in. And you are a and, former U.S. And, attorney. And, yes, and, and I'm, I want to know, I mean, to, to a certain extent, you sort of say, why would they carry this out this far? Because it would have been very easy to come forward and admit that there were problems associated with the way that the, you know, the, uh, the investigations were carried out, that they were against. Department of Power fixing it, and, and, and the horrible repercussions of the fact that, you know, somebody uh, died as a result of it, but yes, it happened and we fixed it. And it seems to me that they're uh, digging a deeper hole by virtue of the way they've handled this. Well, it's sort of curious because they're the ones who, who submitted the letter that they then had to retract later as being untruthful. You then subpoena documents and they say, well, we'll give you some documents, not all. So, of course, you want all. Then they say, we'll cut you a deal, but we're going to decide which documents you can, see, you can see. And you say, no deal. Then they say, okay, you can't see it because of executive, uh, executive privilege. So even if they've got a completely pure hand, uh, it's still, they, they've made it look so suspicious. Well, my sense is it's not a completely pure hand. I mean, we but already I'm hypothetically. Know, I mean, well, they've done their, their conduct. Is but, weird. what we know are the facts. And there's already, you know, indications that have been discussions generally at the highest levels of the Justice Department, which by the very requirement that you get approvals for certain of these things, get it pretty close to the top. And we know that that letter, the first letter that was drafted, included editing from the head of the criminal division. So, we'll you know. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow maybe a little bit more. We certainly will. Congressman, thank you, sir. Okay, thanks for that. Now to California.